Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the house yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank God for my beautiful wife and children. Amen. Yes. yes. Jesus for them. Elder Brian's in the house. Ooh, Sister Lee. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The children. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blessed to have them. My brother's in the house. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Jesus Hallelujah. For them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mimi and Gigi. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everyone online, we love and salute you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone that's tuning in new, amen, or if you've been joining along with the ministry, amen, I pray that the word bless you today, encourage you today as us all here in the house of the Lord, amen, and, and forevermore, amen, because the word of God goes forth and it doesn't return void, amen. amen. It's powerful, it's quick to save, it, it corrects it. It chastises, it improves, it exhorts, it does everything that we need. Amen. And so I'll just open up in prayer before we begin the service today. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we come before you throne, your throne right now, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We exalt you, Lord God, for there is no God like you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you again, Lord God, as we enter into your gates and we bless you again, Lord God, for you are worthy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You are full of light, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are full of glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for your grace, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your word go forth today, Lord God, that your spirit speak alone today again, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We rebuke every, every lying tongue. Every serpent, every scorpion, Lord God, every evil working spirit, Lord God, any form of witchcraft, any form of divination or sorcery, we command it to be dead and silent in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and we bind and silence every lying tongue, every false spirit, in the spirit of her in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Lord God, let your word go forth today, Lord Jesus. Speak to your people this day, Lord God, hallelujah, that it may go into fertile ground, Lord Jesus, and that any hard ground be broken up right now in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, Lord God, yes. that your yes. seed will be planted deep into each and every one of us again and to grow in life and truth yes. and sincerity, Lord God, hallelujah. Yes. Lord God, I pray that we remain humble before your throne and we walk with you humbly, Lord Jesus, that we would even think to receive your grace and your strength day to day, Lord God. Hallelujah, because, Lord Jesus, truly, this is all a miracle in the work of you, Lord God, even to be alive again today with your name on our, in our mouth, Lord Jesus, is only by your grace. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, and we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So I'll, I'll do a brief testimony, amen, and, 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 and see... And ask Elder Brian if he has any words of encouragement, anything the Lord has on his heart to come and, and exhort the saints on. Amen. And and so testimony yesterday, we got to uh we got to go out, amen. We got to go downtown on Stat Tucson yesterday again, praise God, and 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 praise God, amen. That all the equipment's been re, re reassembled, amen, amen. reestablished. Glory to God this amen. last week. So we got to go out. Amen. And labor, hallelujah. And it's the same spot familiar downtown Ronstadt, Tucson, but yet new souls, yet amen. other spirits that didn't want us there. Amen. And so God sent us right to the exact spot that he wanted us to go to. Amen. And that was confirmed as soon as we pulled up. Amen. As soon as we pulled up, amen, that the saints can testify that there was spirits already speaking through. Amen. Those who are working in, 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 in darkness, right? And ultimately the spirits in them did not like the, that the light was coming into that, that playground, that territory of Satan's kingdom, right? And so confirmation of ladies, you know, put, pointing the wrong finger to, towards the saints, other ones yelling, get out of here. You don't need to do that, this, that, the other, and the third, all the way till the word going forth continuously, amen. And, and seeing that there was other men there from Texas that were coming to do ministry work and and whatnot, and just seeing and coming over, and and and, and just just seeing the, the 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 work of the Lord going amen. forth, Amen. It was encouraging amen. them, Amen. It was a blessing to see them out there ministering the gospel and such things. But ultimately, right as we continue to press forward, we got to see the 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 the, the darkness right rise up in souls, right? The, the the workers of iniquity come and try to press in and stop and silence, Amen. The word of God going forth and such things, and so much that. Uh, one of one of them, right? One of them came up and handed 
a big flyer. Hallelujah. As, as me and Elder Brian were, were just ministering the, the word of the Lord, and I felt in the spirit that it's something right here, right? This, this, this is a child of the devil, truly. And 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 how 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 did I know it really really got confirmed by the, the flyer that he handed me? I felt it in the spirit, didn't look at it, didn't give it no thought, and I went and the, and the Lord said, just crease it and just put it underneath the baptism tank so it don't fly away because I didn't want to just have the you know it go and pollute and whatnot. So the baptism tank's right there, just put it underneath there. I said, okay, and I put it underneath there, and we kept on going. And I said, all right, you know, we'll we'll see what that mess is later, right? And as we wrapped up. The Lord confirmed it. It was, uh, it was a big poster of a satanic face of, of, of Satan, if you want to say, or a devil. And it said, De Demon City uh, Seeking or Demon City something, right? These were children of the devil truly out there working their, their, their darkness, amen, and influencing iniquity upon the souls in downtown Tucson, Arizona, and also working in witchcraft, amen. And so he, he came just to deliver that message for the, from the devil. But then we were still there conquering, amen. We were still yeah. there proclaiming the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah. With the mockers, the scoffers, those, even those who were getting pricked in their heart, and we could see them filling the spirit, God was still moving, amen. So yeah. even though the, that Satan sent his many of messengers, hallelujah, the Lord showed me as we were wrapping up, right? Hallelujah. What does the scripture say, right? That when, when he had me fully underneath the baptism tank, right? Which we know baptism is the blood of Jesus for the remission of sins, hallelujah. That Satan said to the servant, you will bite, you will, you will bite his heel, right? You'll take a bite. You'll make your little remarks. You'll make your comments. You'll take your little sharp jabs. But yet, ye shall squash and stomp on his head. Right. You will stomp yes. the head of the serpent, right? Amen. And we see how the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, truly, truly, he stomped all the works of the devil and stomped on his head. Right. Amen. And so that was just so... So symbolic to me of how the Lord told me to put it underneath the baptism tank, right? So right. the serpent tried to come in and, and do whatever, but then the Lord stomped on that serpent's head. How? By hanging on the cross and laying down his life for us. Right. Ultimately, that's how he defeated the works of the devil, by the shedding of his innocent, righteous, holy blood. Yes, right. Now that we can obtain it, right? And now we can go out and stomp and shred over serpents and yes, scorpions on, on every serpent's head. Yes. Amen. And so I give God glory that that, that that was just a testimony of that fly. Yes. Satan sent it to go and try to make a distraction or, or some type of way, right? We, we, right? we forgive them, right? We, we pray, Lord, that uh, lay it not to their charge. Amen. As Elder Brian kept continuously saying, amen. And it's true. You can't let the workers of iniquity come and child and bring any type of bitterness. And you've got to be on guard for that thing because mm -hmm. it will certainly try to rise up. Mm -hmm. It will certainly do it as you go out and you may be in warfare and weaken the flesh and such things. And you're just out there laboring in the Lord. And then this comes against you. You have to truly be on guard and be in the spirit of the Lord and have the grace of God abiding in you and with you. Amen. That this doesn't defile you. That you bless those who curse you. Amen. Amen. Pray for those who despitefully right. or use you. Amen. And so we give God glory that we even have that right state of mind, which is the mind of Christ to even do his work and still walk in the spirit. Amen. And so giving God glory that he stomped on the serpent's head and truly brought us into deliverance. Amen. Yes. And, and so much that as, as the, the wives began to leave and the children, amen, the Lord continued just to have us there. And, and, and here comes a man and a woman, the woman named Winner. Amen. Hallelujah. It wasn't on any any pictures were taken or any on live stream, but they came and, and the man came Roy mm -hmm. saying that he just, they didn't know where they were going. And, and she was asking, well, where are we going this way and that way? He said, I feel led to go this way. I feel led to go that way all the way to where he heard the word. And said, we're going that way Amen. and came up to us and said, the Lord truly brought us here. Wow. The Thank Lord truly led us left, Thank right, left, Jesus. right, left, right, all the way to come here, receive the word, mm -hmm. hear it. And so much that winter got pricked in the heart. And wanted to be baptized. Amen. Amen. Oh, Winner amen. got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the remission of the sins. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. For that one soul. That one, that one soul. Hallelujah. That even the same testimony in Phoenix, Arizona, right? All the yes. labor, all the warfare, all the marketing, yes. all that same thing again, yes. but still all the way to the end. Amen. It shows you even how you have to.
you truly have to endure till the end. Amen. Even in your labor, you got to continue to endure through such things because God's work will be made manifest in his timing. Amen. Amen. You may feel like, oh, it's, it's done. It's over. But nevertheless, the Lord will say, just tarry a little bit longer. Right. Just wait here a little bit longer. I got someone here that's right. going to hear the word. I got someone here that I've been calling and working on for years now. And right now is the time and the moment. And it's going to be a the precise moment. Because if we would have left just a little bit earlier, that word would have gone forth. And well, I don't hear him no more. Let's go this way. Well, who knows where the left turn would have gone or the right turn would have gone. But the right turn was straight ahead. And that was at the water of baptism in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. And so we continue to keep winter in prayer and even glory that they will come Hallelujah. to the truth of God's word, that they will surrender their lives truly and even plug in with the ministry here and continue to yes. have their walk, right? Yes. As we exhort them last night, you cannot, you do not want to have the mindset of a double-minded man to be unstable in all your ways, to just go and choose hypocrisy or lies or, or sin. You've got to truly Give your life to God and follow after him and he will bless you and guide you in your steps. Amen. 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 And so that's just a brief testimony of yesterday's war for giving God all the glory. Hallelujah. That there was a soul baptized yesterday and through all that witchcraft and all that, all them, uh, all them people. Amen. God truly brought deliverance. And so, um, yeah, amen. If there's any word, Elder Brian, that the Lord has upon your heart. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, family. Lord bless you. Be able to fellowship with you. Tucson, Arizona today. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Yep, we're just excited for the word that the Lord has in your pastor's mouth, our pastor Joshua. So, no, just grace and peace be upon all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus. We're just, we're just blessed to be here. Love you guys. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Such a blessing to have the saints in the house. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. And so, Hallelujah. yet the Lord allowed me to, he, he's been laying something on me. And I was allowed to get, amen, some notes put together. Praise the Lord, amen. And by the grace of God, the Lord will just open up our understanding today even the more, amen. Lord, lead us and guide us into all truth and wisdom this day in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And so the Lord has really been showing me, and I've been feeling in the spirit, witchcraft against God's people, right? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing new under the sun. This thing's been going on since back then, right? There ain't nothing to be fearful about, ain't nothing to be timid about, ain't nothing to be wandering about. Oh, well, how, what are they doing and how is it going to affect me? It's simple. It's not going to affect you when you obey God's word. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth and reality of it. And we'll get into the scriptures and see, right, that we're going to overcome all forms of witchcraft as we already are. Amen. We can only imagine what the work is of, of the, the, the children of the devil are truly doing behind closed doors and even out in open public. Amen. But nevertheless, we're still standing. We're still sober. We still have praise in our mouth. We still have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We still are walking in the spirit of God. Amen. And not only that, we're thriving. We're growing. We have blessings and increase and, and children still, uh, still continuing to come. Amen. Right. And that the church of God is continuing to grow. And this is why, amen, the devil don't want that to happen. He don't want truth to rise up. He don't want the standard and the doctrine, the truth of God's word to rise up and show and be a light into the world. He don't want children to rise up in it, having his name and his spirit. Amen. He hates this work. So right. even though he has his children doing their work, God is prevailing. And this is what we see all the way, right? Thank you, Jesus. We see this all the way back into uh, in Numbers, Numbers 22. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where Balak, right, he 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 pleads. He's 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 mm -hmm. he's calling upon Balaam, the mm -hmm. soothsayer, the magician, the, the the worker, right? They would say the occultist, right? This man had powers to bless and to curse that were true and, and real, and they knew. That's why this man was calling upon Balaam, right, the soothsayer, because he knew that he could effectively do something, right? But we look into the scriptures and get back to the word. Numbers chapter twenty-two, starting at verse one, and the children of Israel set forward. And pitched in the plains of Moab on the side of Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We stop and pause right here, even to right now. This word speaks to us so sharp, so clearly. What God is doing through his people throughout the cities, the nations, the regions, even in other countries. Amen. That plug in online that are hearing the word. We're just by the grace and power of God disrupting demonic activity. Amen. We're bringing truth to people that truly people are seeing. OK, God's not OK with that. Amen. I truly need to get rid of this thing. I truly need to be delivered. I thought I was OK with this because a pastor said it and this said it and this that. Nevertheless, the word of God is going forth in delivering 
and souls are coming to it, and the church is growing. And inside the church, the wombs are being blessed and multiplying and growing. Amen? And so the enemy obviously does not like that, right? We're overthrowing his demonic networks and territories. Verse 3, and Moab was sore afraid of the people. Hallelujah. Sore afraid of the people. This is exactly what's going on in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. He's sore afraid of the truth continuing to go forth. Amen. That's why he tries to weaken the saints out, get them tired in their mind, tired in the body, and all these type of things that we react in the flesh and that we would hinder the work of God. But God says you need to crucify and die to that flesh, put that thing in subjection, and the spirit, my grace, will guide you, will give you the strength, will give you the encouragement, and I will show you in my word, I will never leave you nor forsake you, that you need to hold steadfast to what I've said to you, and I will show you the blessing and increase. But Satan, hallelujah, is, is fearful and is so afraid of the people because they were many and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Sore distressed. Amen. Even yesterday, the, 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 the children of the enemy were sore distressed right. to see us there. Get out of here. You better not do it. You better pack up. You better not preach here. Don't do it. Like it was supposed to come and make us fearful. What? That that, that your warlock is going to come out and come and put witchcraft on? I don't care what they're doing. I don't care what type of sacrifice, what type of idol, what, how much fasting they've been doing. None of their dark power will override the blood of Jesus. Amen. Will never override yes. the word of God. God, you ain't going to bind the word of God. They're foolish things things that they can bind the power of God. They literally think this and they practice it to a high extreme level, but the word of God still prevails. The word of God is still open before us here and the spirit of God brings the understanding. Do you think that you can really bind the spirit of God? You're a fool. You're a liar and you're a deceiver. And that's why the spirit is saying that there's even fruit bearing witness to this, that there ain't no binding of the power of God. It simply comes down to people's ignorance and foolishness, ultimately to rebellion and iniquity and perverseness is why anything would take uh, take form in that fashion right and that's why god's word says to us turn from these things right it's not just about legalism and doing this new god says i'm preserving your body now and your soul from judgment of the wrath to come it's not just laws that i'm telling you to do to be a a, 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 a master puppeteer or whatever right i'm doing this for your own good because i love you hallelujah Amen. so we look into this right and, uh, and continuing to go verse five now he sent messengers therefore unto balaam the son of Beor, to pethor which is by the river of the land of the children of his people to call him saying behold there is a people come out from egypt hallelujah there's a people that have come out from egypt we have come out from Egypt. We have come out from the world. And hallelujah, again, the enemy does not like to see that there's fruit in the lives and the testimonies of the saints that have come out from Egypt and have truly been changed, have truly been renewed, baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost and have understanding of his word. This is the power of the testimony and revelations he talks about, that we are overcomers by the power of the blood of the land and by the word of our testimony. Amen. And by that power of the blood of God and by the word of our testimony, it does something different to the hypocritical church, right? To those who, who don't, that don't want to preach the truth and such things, right? When you go out and you've truly been changed of the Lord coming out from Egypt, it does something to the world. It does something, it speaks hope, it, it does conviction, it, it does edification, all these things, amen? And we see this with what God is doing, glory to God, amen? That they've come out from Egypt, behold, they cover the face of the earth, hallelujah, and they abide over against me, amen? Verse 6, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, right? That's what he's trying to do, he, he tried to get this man to hire him, to buy him out, to put curses on Israel, the children of the Lord, right? that they would stop, that he would diminish them, that he would stop, that they wouldn't be overthrown, right? That the darkness would prevail and the light would diminish, but that's not what happens, glory to God. Amen, still to this day. Curse this people, for they are too mighty for me. Per adventure, I shall prevail that we might smite them and that I, might, I may drive them out of the land, for I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, right? And he whom thou cursest is cursed. This is why he came to Balaam. This is why he tried to offer him the silver, the gold, all these things to buy him out, that he would put a curse on, on the children of Israel. But this is where we get to just jump into verse 12 in the same chapter, right? And, 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 and Balaam said, well, I, 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 I'm going to see, right? Because he would hear from the Lord. He would hear from the Lord, and the Lord even used him to speak. He speak through this man, this soothsayer. 
He speaks through him. This is the power of God. Glory to Jesus. I have the same testimony of this. That God's so good. He's so powerful. He'll use a sorcerer. He'll use a witchcraft worker. And use them for his good. He'll use them for his glory. He overrides all that demonic network. Amen. And uses that Amen. same vessel yes. for his glory. Yes. You want to talk yes. about the yes. power of Jesus? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This is so good, y'all. That when I was in my foolishness. I was in my rebellion. I was in great deep darkness. Dark, dark. God used the witch I was staying with, hallelujah, to even turn around and preserve my life from people coming trying to take it. He used a real witch worker to, to, to come up on her and say, you need to get out, right? Made phone calls and worked the whole thing out. God did it to preserve my soul, knowing that if I died that day, I would definitely be in hell. God's so good, hallelujah. Amen. He does the same thing today. Hallelujah. He'll use them same people for his goodness and his glory, hallelujah. We don't need to fear anything, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Verse 12 says, Amen. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Amen. The Lord spoke to Balaam, Don't go with them. When, when he sends when, when he sends his, his men, don't go with them, right? Don't go and do this. Because we see it here, Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. And when he speaks, he's not a liar. When he speaks, it don't come back void. This is true. This is real. Amen. Glory to God. So now we'll jump to this, right? We'll jump to this because we know what Balaam, how, how, he says, how can I curse what God is blessed? Because the Lord said it right here. But now we're going to jump to Numbers 23. Next chapter over, starting at verse 15. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Balak, they had the seven altars, right? Offering up sacrifices in the high places unto Baal, right? Doing all their all their workings and this and that. Always oh, they're, they're they're hustling. They're they're putting in work. They're they're laboring to get this thing to come against the children of God. They're laboring, glory to God. That's what the enemy's doing out there. They're laboring diligently against the church, but we're still growing. We're still thriving, and hallelujah. We're still walking in the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Numbers twenty three, starting at verse fifteen, and he said unto Balak. Stand here by the burnt offering while I meet the Lord yonder. Amen. You can stand right here by these sacrifices that you're doing on the bell. I'm going to go over here and meet the Lord yonder, right? Hallelujah. This is the God that we serve. Verse 16, and the Lord met Balaam. Hallelujah. He came right to the soothsayer and put a word in his mouth and said, go unto Balaam. Go unto that man that's trying to hire you to put witchcraft on my people, right? And say thus, hallelujah. God gave him a word to declare to that man. Amen. Verse 17, and when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, what hath the Lord spoken? Hallelujah. And he took up his parable and said, rise up, Balak. Amen. And hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. Amen. Verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Amen. Hath he said... And shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Amen. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This is the Lord speaking yes. through this man saying, look, it ain't going to go the way you're thinking. The Lord saying he, they're blessed no matter what you try to do. And I'm delivering this again unto you right now. Amen. Because it happened a few times. He kept going back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth, trying to curse the people of God. And the same message will keep coming. You ain't going to curse what God has blessed. Amen. Verse 21. This is where we get to really that the Lord is highlighting in this message of overcoming witchcraft. Verse 21. <clears throat> Amen. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. This is why the Lord has blessed Israel. Amen. The people of God. Because why? He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob's sin. Right? And continuing. Neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. So why is God's protection so over them? Why is the blessing continuing to come forth? Why is the witchcraft not going to work? Is because God Himself has not seen iniquity nor perverseness in the children of the people of God. Amen. Continuing on, the Lord His God is with Him, and He, I'm sorry, and the shout of a king is among them. Verse 22, and God brought them out of Egypt 
He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. And then verse 23, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Ain't no enchantment. I don't care if they stay up 48 hours, not drinking or eating, cutting themselves left and right, doing whatever they, ain't no enchantment going to come against Israel. But we have to be on guard that God don't make an example out of us as he's done in times past with Israel, with the house, with the children of God. Amen. Because when you go to subtly move away and take a here to a lying devil, then you can make a small little adjustment. God really don't mean it that way. God, his mercy is so deep and rich that you can keep in your rebellion. No, the mercy says I lay my life down for that. The grace says I'm coming to correct you as a loving child. Amen. Don't be a bastard child that runs for my correction. Receive this, right? Because iniquity and perverseness will be a door open for the enemy to come in. Mm -hmm. Iniquity and perverseness will be what the witches want to happen. Yes. Amen. Because when I was in my foolishness, before God got me up out of one of these environments, right? They would feed me to my appetite. What's your what's your addiction, basically? They give me free dope all day. Sure. I'm like, who does this? What's right. like, what's going on with y'all? I think y'all gonna set me up and y'all informants and whatnot, but really they were witches and warlocks putting sin into me that their witchcraft would work. But then it backfired by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. So yes. they want children of God to go into iniquity. They want us to pervert the scriptures and to go into falsehood in these things. That's when God will say, okay, I'm going to show you that I'm real about my word. And my standard is still the same. And I'm not a God that will change or I'm going to lie or have to repent these things, right? I'm a man of my word ultimately. And so this is what we have to be on guard for, that we continue to overcome all forms of witchcraft. Amen. Yes. But again, right, as long as we're, we're steadfast in this and we're, 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 we're looking at ourselves, first ourselves, Lord, is there anything going on within me? Lord God, am I getting weak and weary? Well, I'm making, making slight accommodations to my flesh or some taking heat to seduce this. Lord, deal with me. Is there something wrong with me? We look at ourselves first before our brother, our sister, right? But then as we get cleared up and we get the, the log out of our eye, right, we can go to our brother and say, brother, look, God ain't with this, right? We got to repent from these things. Amen. But back into the scripture, hallelujah. There ain't no enchantment that's going to come against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Hallelujah. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to highlight on the iniquity and perverseness that God did not behold in the people of God. That's why they were blessed and that's why the witchcraft would not work, right? And truly, this is where, again, these, these workers of, uh, of darkness, they want us to compromise. They want us right. to, as Elder Brian was saying again yesterday, Satan's subtle. Mm -hmm. He's going to come in real slick and slow in just one little word. Right. So where you'll, you'll miss it, for real. If you're in your flesh, right. Right. you're not walking in the spirit, you'll miss it. You'll be like, whoa, hold up. I lowered, I, I went into hypocrisy. I lowered the standard. And I didn't even realize it for real because... Yeah, it was just one little word. It was just a change of the scripture. It was just a hath he surely said and did he really right. say? Right. Just right. one thing and bringing doubt into the mind and then all that. That's witchcraft. Right. Manipulation, intimidation, and control. It's all witchcraft, right? But God's so good. He says, be sober minded. I'm going to show you these things and be on guard, right? Iniquity and perverseness, right? We were here yesterday in the streets, amen? Isaiah 59 verses 1 through 4. Yes. Amen. Iniquity and perverseness will separate you from God's protection. Iniquity and perverseness will bring you into breaching. Amen. Breaches into your own body, own soul, mind, all that. Your home, what you have, what you lay your hands to, everything. It'll be a breach in the spiritual realm. But that's why God says you got to stay steadfast with this thing. Amen. And I will show you and bring you back to where I, I, I truly want my church has needs and has to be. Isaiah 59 verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Amen. Verse 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. What is it? The iniquities. Hallelujah. The sin. This is what God has always been after. The transgression all the way from the beginning of the garden. Hallelujah. It's the same thing as when you're a parent. You tell your child to do something. They say no. Or they say, I'm going to do, do it anyways. That, that, that righteous... That righteous anger, you feel it's like, what'd you say? 
You know how much I've been laboring for you, even just to come out the womb, how much labor it took just to bring forth your life that God's given you. And now it keeps going, right? Amen. But you feel that as a heavenly father with right. us being the children of God, that when he speaks to us, you know, it's like, Lord, forgive me, you know, when that happens for real. Forgive me when, when my flesh struggles against your spirit. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord God. Right? Because I want to be a child unto you that's pleasing. Right? I know how it is with my children when they disrespect me or don't listen to me and how it's great wickedness and rebellion. Lord God, let that be far from me with you. And then you're a true loving father, Lord God. And surely that's the work of the flesh. I need to die to that thing. Amen. But the iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Amen. Verse three, for your hands are defiled with blood. Amen. God hates the shedding of innocent blood, even to the physical. Obviously, we know we ain't going and cutting throats and doing all that wickedness no more. But God in the spirit says you can still shed blood. And that person could be greatly innocent, but when you're speaking such things, you could be shedding the blood of innocent people and you don't even know it. You gotta make sure that you know of a, of a of, that you know of a thing, right? You gotta be we gotta be very careful, even speaking to myself right now, very careful what comes out of our mouth and what we're entertaining and saying that we're not shedding innocent blood and God has an out against any of us. Amen? Amen. We gotta continually have truth in our mouth. But God says again that your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, right? You're laying your hands to basically whatever you want to do, thinking you're all good, but it's not going to work out. Your lips have spoken lies, amen? We know that the scripture says all liars have their part in the lake of fire, amen? That's why we got to train the children up in the fear and admonition of the Lord for real. Amen. That when you speak right. of a little joke and you think it's just a joke, well, don't you know uh, Satan uses comedians right. and jesters to be jokers and to make and desensitize the mind that it ain't all that real? Right. When God's word says, oh, I'm definitely real, you lie one time, that's enough to transgress my law, amen? But that's why I lay my life down for you. We got to be so on guard from these little subtle things of Satan that try to creep into the house of God that there be no breaches. Amen. Right? We, chill, we tell the children, look, that's a lie. I know it seems funny. It's a joke, right? Even to the flesh, I mean, ha ha. No, I'm going to nip that right in the bud. That's a lie, son. That's a lying devil. Hallelujah. Right. You don't want to have nothing with the, with the, with the father Amen. of lies, Satan Amen. himself. You'll go straight to hell, son. Amen. And you got to submit. On, you got you to gotta listen to me as unto the Lord. Your parents, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. If we continue to go on, even as us as adults, right, unto the Lord, amen, that we don't have these things in our mouth. And, and continuing on, that your tongue has hath muttered perverseness. Amen. amen. Perverseness, we know, can go in great lengths with the world and sin and such things. We know God's pulled us out of all that. Amen. God's bringing us up to a higher place as, the, as Israel, as the church, right? That, that we have no perverseness of his word. We have no perverseness of his word, which is our lives now. Amen. So there's no perverseness in our life. That as Elder Brian was saying yesterday, that he was so subtle that, that he can come and say, oh, okay. You know, well, the, the, the ladies, you know, have, have the woman's apparel, not the men's apparel. We have the, the outer adorning, as, as the Lord says, in holiness and modesty and such things. But then he'll say, oh, okay, well, you can have the skirt up a little bit higher. You know, oh, at least I'm still in, in a woman's garment, right? And it's true. Yeah, you'll still, he'll have some truth with his little subtle lie. Right. You'll still have a woman's garment, but the skirt will be getting up a little bit higher. And then, you know, another couple months, oh, that one's cute, and it's a little bit higher. And once you start walking away from the standard, now it's above the knees. Now it's above, now it's exposing the whole crotch. And that's basically right. where right. a lot of churches are. They're right. going, and men's flesh are being right. feeded. Right. Hallelujah. And, 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 and they don't even know that they're being a stumbling right. block unto their brother. Right. Right. And that right. they're actually right. have... Uh, a sin on them for being a stumbling block and that man for even maybe committing adultery in his heart. So this thing gets so real that we got to nip that thing right in the bud. Say, I see you. I rebuke you. That thing's going to stay long. It's going to stay free flowing as the word of God says in the Greek, right? The cop that stole for that garment in the scriptures in Timothy, right? That it's going to stay the standard that we don't pervert God's word. Right. We pervert God's word. There'll be a great breach in the church. And that's where Satan and his little workers try to come on in, right? And God will allow. If we're allowing breaches in the church, he'll allow an example to be made unto the children of God. Mm -hmm. So that why? We would correct it ultimately, right? That we would humble ourselves. That's what God wants. He doesn't want just for you to get, oh, you let a breach and now you're going to hell. No, he wants people to humble themselves. Mm -hmm. Look, you don't messed up. Right, you 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 took heed to the serpent for real. Just be truthful. Repent. Right. Repent and come back to my word. It's very simple. It's very simple, the simplicity that's in Christ. It really is. Amen. He's rich in mercy every day, right? 
but it's the humbleness of the of the heart and of the mind of the soul of the man first that it truly comes down to, right? Mm -hmm. So iniquities and perverseness, right? Verse 4, still in Isaiah 59. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, they speak lies, they conceive mischief, and bring forth iniquity. And so much this is going on in the house of God. This is why God cries out in his word, right? That there's going to be wolves in sheep's clothing, right? Mm -hmm. There are many great wolves in sheep's clothing. Quote in scripture, have all the following, all these things and all this and that. But they have a spirit of a wolf in them that's coming to devour the weak and the feeble-minded that, that ain't stable in their walk. Well, does God really mean all that? Does he need all that? And they're coming to swoop up on them, right? Mm -hmm. And we got to be on guard for these things. Hallelujah. Because it's going on in the church, but nevertheless, we're sticking with, with what God says. We're going to be above conquering all any form of witchcraft or divination, right? Amen. And so even looking into, this is why the Lord says in Jeremiah chapter 3, amen. Israel kept backsliding and going on and forth and doing this and that, abominations, idolatry, and all these things. It's the same thing happening today in the house of God idolatry, putting things before God, putting material things, finances, anything before the Lord. God says, I would rather have your obedience than any sacrifice. That sacrifice ain't mean nothing to me if I don't have your obedience. Child, right? Child as we're children of God. Amen? And so this is where we get to Jeremiah. We were here again yesterday. Glory to God. Amen. Jeremiah, uh, starting at verse 12, go and proclaim these words toward the north. And said, return, thou backsliding Israel. This is what God is saying to his people, right? Yeah, there's been, you've been deceived by wolves and sheep's clothing, false prophets, and all these, these, these spirits of error and whatnot, right? The spirit of error. But nevertheless, God's saying still to the church, amen? Return unto me, amen? Backslidden Israel, said the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, said the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Amen. Verse 13 clearly executes what God wants us to do, that we be not lost and deceived. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. Iniquity and perverseness was what God kept the, 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 the strength and blessing over Israel from, from Balaam, right? right? So we have to acknowledge when there is truthful iniquity. Right. Look, I've fallen right. short. Look, I didn't, I didn't even realize it just happened. Lord, clear me out, cleanse out and uproot anything, right? Open up my eyes that I'm seeing things not right. I'm, I'm looking too much in the carnal for real. I'm missing the spiritual. Lord, open up my eyes, right? He's going to say, we got to spend more time with me. He's going to say, you're going to have to turn over your plate. He said, you're going to have to get more in the spirit and crucify that flesh even the more. You want me to open up your eyes, son, daughter, right? But nevertheless, when he does open up our eyes, we see that there's a fault. He says, acknowledge. That's all we got to do. Don't run from this. Right. Oh, we're good. Right. Oh, we, 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 we can continue as Adam and Eve did with the fig leaves and so our own little apron sink that's going to cover up our nakedness and walk into the house of God. And he said, I see all that. I see all that. And then some, and you think you're good. And they, oh, you know, I do know your heart. It's exactly abominable and wicked Amen. above all things. Right. That's why I said it. Cover yourself up. Be ye holy as I am holy, right? I've instructed you in my words to get back into the right state, but you don't even want to acknowledge your iniquity. Right. You're justifying your iniquity by the abomination that's set in your heart to be against me. To, to be an idol, right? Even setting our, uh, uh, ourselves as idols before the Lord. Because why? We won't even submit to his word. That's idolatry in of itself. If we don't submit to God's word, we just became our own God in our own life thinking that we're seeing Jesus in peace. And he ain't going to say that. Amen. But what does God say? Again, only acknowledge the iniquity, right? That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, said the Lord. Turn, O backslidden children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, right? And I will take you one of a city. <laughs> I will take you one of a city and two of a family and bring you to Zion. Verse 15. Hallelujah. And I will give you pastors according to my own heart. You must have it is not Bible to be saved and not be having a pastor and submitting to a pastor. Right. It is salvational. It is Bible. Ain't no other way around it. Right. God doesn't say just go and minister to minister and do this and do that and find around. No. If right. you're seeking truth and God's showing you truth more, truth more, truth, glory to God. 
But God says, once you see the pastor has the word of God and understanding is coming, you are to submit to that man of God because it's not the man, truly, it's the spirit of God working through him. And he's going to govern and watch over your soul. Amen. It's the way God has his government, the way he orders it, right? But the carnal mind will think, well, I'm not sending no man. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take none from from anyone, right? But then we get out of the flesh into the spirit. Well, hold on, look, everything that, that that man's saying is of the scripture. I'm getting understanding by the Holy Ghost. This truly is of the Lord, just through that man as a vessel of conduit, right? Because he says, I will give you pastors according to my own heart. How do we know that the man of God has truth? You have to line upon line, precept upon precept, make sure that the spirit and that man's mouth is of Jesus right. and not the spirit of perverseness or iniquity Amen. Of, of Satan, right? Yes. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Right. Amen. This is why the Lord will raise raise up men and, and, and open up their eyes and understanding. It's truly not just for themselves to go and hide the talent, right? And to run off and say, oh, I got the knowledge and understanding. Oh, God will deal with that, man. You've got to open up your mouth and show the people and be there for them to lead and guide them. Amen. Right. Even as a shepherd, right? He's the great shepherd and the great bishop of all of our souls. But he sets up and ordains and appoints little shepherds on this earth. Amen. Amen. And what is, what is the man of God to do? Well, the man of God is to watch out for perverseness and iniquity. Right? And that there be no breaches and such things. Amen. And so even looking right here to Isaiah 58, verses 1 and 2. Amen. Very familiar uh, scripture, amen, that we love. Definitely I love myself because it's just the, the, the Lord speaking to us, right? That this is the will of God. Isaiah 58, verses 1 and 2. Cry aloud, spare not. Amen. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. The man of God is supposed to lift up your voice. Cry aloud and preach against sin, iniquity, perverseness. This is what God raises up his own pastors to do because it's according to God's will and to God's own heart. Amen. But you'll see when, 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 it's, when it's dropped down a little bit, when they don't want to cry out against it, when they want to please men rather than pleasing God, you'll see that fruit, right? God says, watch out for it, right? And the witches and warlocks are looking for these little things to come in through. Hallelujah. And show my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob, their sins. Amen? It's possible. It's an old time all the way till new. And it's going on today. You can get saved, repented, baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and be living for the Lord, yet be found in some type of iniquity. Right. Have either gone astray a little bit of too much in the flesh again, or taking heed to a seducing spirit, or just got comfortable, whatever which way. It's possible. It's going to happen time and time again. Amen. So don't think it's strange. Only what? Acknowledge it and turn from it. Right. Even now to this day, each and every single one of us, if God brings up something to us, we got to repent from it. Right. And it will always be this way. That's why he says he who endures to the end. Right. We got to continue picking up our walk, our cross, and walking after the Lord. Amen. But this is this is the will of the Lord. This is another part of why God will raise up men, amen, to cry aloud, spare not, to show the house of God, amen, the people of God, any sins and iniquity, amen, looking out for you, right? Verse 2, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God, amen. You can have delight in seeking the Lord and, and having in his word on your heart and, and meditating in such things. Yet you could still be doing all these things, paying tithes, spending time, all of this unto the Lord. And that's good. Yeah. But still have iniquity. Yeah. Right. You could still have iniquity in you. And you don't want to be the one that he says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Right. Yeah. right? And so, again, time and time again, it's, it's, it's happened to people. But God's good to, to show us, right? To show us and keep us ultimately. Yeah. And then I'm dropping down as we 58 verse 12 now. And they that shall be on thee shall build the old waste places, right? Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in, right? This is where the man of God is to point back to what thus saith the Lord. When there's a transgression, what thus saith the Lord, right? 
What, what was the commandment? What was the instruction in the word of God? Where is the transgression that we may be in that we can go back and seek the truth and repent and get in right, right? Mm -hmm. When we have this mindset, this humbleness, truly being humble, because even if you've been used by the Lord many a times, you've done them so much and, and God's used you, but yet God still come and rebuke you. You've got to truly be humble and say, Lord, please forgive me. And this is all that God wants us to do, right? But this is the repairer of the breach, right? The man of God is supposed to cry out against it and repair these breaches of iniquity and perverseness, right? Even though many will say, yep, yeah, again, you're doing too much legalism, all these types of things. We test that spirit. We see that spirit's a liar. We hold steadfast to the scripture. I'm making it into the kingdom. I don't know about y'all. Yes. I don't know about what you want to do. I know what I want to do. I got to please God and live for him. And truthfully, from the heart, got to mean it. Mm -hmm. Because he said, he said, I'm going to try the reins of your heart. Right. You think you say you're going to live for me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna test your heart, son, daughter. Right. And I'm really going to test it. Where you maybe not even thought I was going to go down to that depth of, of pulling left and right. right. And you're going to feel the flesh cry out against the spirit sometimes. Oh, Lord, you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless... Don't let that flesh override and become a bell over the glory of God and his will, right? right. Keep, the, keep that thing torn. Keep that thing torn that God always had authority in our lives. And this is how we, again, conquer all witchcraft is obedience to God's work. Amen. Mm -hmm. Restoring these the, the, the old paths. Lord, what's what's the way? Which way do I do? Do I walk? Right. How, how, how do I do this and such things? Right. Because even. Hallelujah, where were we at here? Even in the, there's many, many, uh, this could keep going on and on and on. Leviticus 10, right? Leviticus 10. always have to go back to the word of God to see what does the Lord accept Amen. and what does he want. And so Leviticus 10, man, this is about Nadab and Abihu, right? And they, and how the Lord made an example of this. In verse 1, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord. Ooh. Right? which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and God made an example of this to what that God wanted a certain way, a certain offering right. in that incense to be burnt the way he wanted it. That's right. right. What God says he means. Yeah. Old Testament, this is still the same God. Amen. This yes. is still the same God. But yet people think that the, the, the grace is the doormat to trample over the Son of God, the body of Christ. Yeah. Oh, he died for yeah. you. You just keep saying, oh, he died for you. You just keep trampling, you keep trampling over the body of the Messiah that ain't even down in here no more. Yeah. He's up now and ascended. Mm -hmm. You can't trample him, hallelujah. And he'll show you, you ain't going to trample me. But he made that example even here. There's so many other testimonies of this in the Bible, right? But we look at this, well, Lord, what is, what do you accept? What do you want me to put in this sense? Right? What is the, 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 the exact herb of the smell, right? What is, how, how do I wake up and how do I offer up my praise and sacrifice? What is acceptable unto you? What is me being a living sacrifice, right? What do you truly accept? Are you really okay with me listening and watching this? Are you really okay with me putting my hands to that? Right. Are you really okay with me engaging in this conversation? Right. If it's no, 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 well, then we got some work to do. Yeah. We, we got this cross to carry for real because th that thing was real light before hearing all this. But now it just got more real right. and we see, Lord, I'm really going to need you in your strength because ain't, ain't no one going to be for me on this. All one, everyone's going to be against me, it's going to feel like. But God says, nevertheless. I'm for you. Amen. Who can be against yes. you? If I'm with you, who can be against you? Amen. Not even Balaam. Not Balak and all his money that could buy the, 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 the witch in the world to come again. If I'm with you, right? And this is where we have to be even individually. Even if you ain't out preaching on the corner, if you ain't out going and baptizing, ordained as a minister, right? If you're not even doing that type of work, if you're just saying that you're in the house of Israel, in the house of Jacob, you're a child of God, you are to still be abiding to this same 
precept that what thus saith the Lord and abide in it. Why? Because we're getting back to the witchcraft workers because the children of the devil are looking for any sheep to come and take away. Any type of perverseness, any type of iniquity. Oh, I'm going to send some devils on them that they're going to be able to contain from this spell or whatever. But yet, see, when your heart's not set on iniquity and your heart's not set on perverseness, when even a lying devil will come and tempt you, it's I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and you keep it moving for the Lord. I'm going to shame this devil by being obedient to the Lord. Amen. I'm going to change my wardrobe, right? We're, we're talking about modesty earlier. I'm going to change and throw out the garments, right? I'm going to throw out all the things that aren't pleasing to the Lord. Anything that I've been watching or hearing to, right? And, it's, and, it, and when you make that change, right, and you get this way sanctified unto the Lord for real, and then sanctified, glory to God, which is right here in verse 3, Leviticus 10, 3. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them. Hmm. I will be sanctified in them. We say we have the Holy Ghost. We say the Spirit of God resides up in us as an earthly an earthen vessel, the tabernacle of the Lord that he's willing in the house. My Lord, I will be sanctified. And God said, I'm going to be in you. I want you to be sanctified for real. Why? It's not because of us. It's because of him. Him that dwells in us. I will be sanctified in them. And then that come nigh me. Amen. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Amen. Ultimately, holiness. We look at this scripture. Right. Holiness, the Lord is saying. I am holy. He said in the New Testament, right. be ye holy. Right. What does holy mean? Set apart. Yes. Sanctified. Yes fit for the master's use, entirely and completely perfected as a man in Christ. As, as Elder Brown was laboring yesterday on perfection, perfection, God says perfection in his word time and time again. And any other uh, false prophet that wants to say, right, oh, you ain't got to be, you can't be perfect, ain't no Brother, you definitely ain't feeling that cross. Brother, you definitely still in the flesh. Brother, you definitely taking heat to a seducing spirit. Brother, you preaching error. You know God's going to hold you reliable and accountable for every word that came out of your mouth and every soul that's taking heed to your lying spirit. That they say, I ain't got to be perfect. God died for me in this. Great blood is upon those men's hands, and they don't even know it. Why? And truthfully, you know God be pricking the men of God's heart that has, you know, even put an anointing on for real, but they resist God. They don't find themselves being like, Lord, I got 300 followers. I got a crowd. I got a $10,000 a month building. Now, I can't tell them this. I'm going to lose 30, 99% of the, of, the, of the people. Right. And, and, and they don't want to humble themselves. Well, God be glorified, the building go, right? God be glorified, I, I lose all the following. God be glorified, they call me a hypocrite. Or, or I turn my back on them because it's not me turning my back on them. Right. It's me loving them and saying, look, y'all, I made a mistake. Right. God really, truly ain't cool with all this. We ought to repent. Right. But y'all don't even feel like putting on sackcloth and ashes, right? Y'all think, oh, that's too right. much, like... No, yeah, God still, you feel like that? You getting that type of, you, that's how you feel in the spirit. You get on, you feel like you don't sin against the Lord. You just want to go and cry before him and weep before him and purge you of that. That iniquity and that perverseness that was in you that you even had to be inconceived and, and liking for that season, right? But that's the point of being humble, that the men of God, that God will raise up, that we all must be, amen, that we truly be sanctified. Amen, this is being sanctified for real, Amen. And so we continue on that's, that God will raise up to show us, right? This is what's so beautiful. God shows us the, his past. He shows us that there's a breach. Let's restore it, right? Yes. Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. Not man's way. God, what do you say? How is your way? What do you accept, right? That it truly be not a breach no more. That ain't no devil from hell coming up in this place, right? And he ain't going to have his way, right? He ain't going to have his way. And he's not going to take our souls to hell with him, right? Yes. And so, and then we look, uh, verse 13, so I'm on Isaiah 58 again, amen, Isaiah 58, 13, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. We know that every day our Sabbath is now in Christ, the body of, of the Son of God, right? The Sabbath now is every day. We keep every day unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Every day is to be holy. Every day is to be sanctified. And so opposite, so from how it says here in the scripture, right? We want to be opposite of, of not doing our own pleasure. We don't want to have our own pleasure of being sanctified with the Lord. Well, Lord, 
I'm cool, you know, I, I feel like I've been doing it pretty good with you for a while. Like, can I get a break? Can I just go over here and do this? <laughs> My flesh has really been being crucified. I like to get off the cross now for a second. But God says, no, right? Don't go do your own pleasure. Right. Don't go do your own perverseness. Don't you know Satan's lying at the door ready to take you, ready to consume you, right? right? But it will. But he says sin will not have dominion over you, right? When you're truly sanctified, set apart, and you're living for the Lord, you're going to be able to stand right against Satan in his face Amen. and say, thus said the Lord, hallelujah. Right. The Lord rebuke you. <laughs> the Lord rebuke you. Right. And, and I have peace. I have joy. I got strength of the Lord. I'm going to continue in the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow this breach to come, Satan. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have my own pleasure. I'm not going to speak my own words. God forbid we speak our own words. Hallelujah. The word of God told, tells us though, that the heart is above, above all is more deceitful and, and desperately wicked. Who could know it? Right? And, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Right. So you see perverseness and iniquity is just born and shaped in iniquity, as Job said. Hallelujah. That's why the word of God shows us and instructs us. The children got to gotta get baptized in the name of just the, the children need the spirit of God. Hallelujah. I was even seeing last night, I jumped on real quick, and I seen uh, Sis posted a post about... The, 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 the satanic church in the in the in the in the in the schools now. Mm -hmm. They're getting down with this thing. Right. Little children, right. right? Looking like little uh, Elijah here. No they, Satan don't care about no He wants the children, That's matter right. of fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Apostle said that the church don't even want the children to be baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost and everything that the Word of God instructs us to be. But yet Satan's ready for the children. He wants the children right. that he right. has I was seeing these pictures last yeah. night, and it was just great oh, wickedness goodness. in a pentagram, all dressed up, and these are little kids. Yeah. So you mean to tell me the church of God says, no, you got to wait, little Johnny, you got to wait, little Susie. You got to go and commit great boredom, but yet you don't spoke a lie today. You rebelled against your child, your father. Right. You rebelled against your mother. You hit your little sister. Right. You don't did everything that the Bible instructed that was not good. You're already in sin, and you don't even have... We see how that keeps going in the name of Jesus, but God is so good. He's restoring those breaches of what the enemy brought in that the children can't be saved. God's so good. He restores the breaches of, of, of what righteousness God says is, and they say, he don't, you don't got to do all that, right? God is bringing back Israel to being blessed. God is bringing back Israel to not be cursed. Hallelujah. God is bringing Israel to be fruitful in the womb. Hallelujah. And birth this truth. Hallelujah. And to continue to grow. Amen. And Satan can't stand it. Hallelujah. But glory to God. Amen. Verse 13, right, 14. Mm -hmm. can, can I? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, family, but this is the Lord. Remind, Revelation 12. Yes, sir. And 4. Just to your just to your point, how the devil he wants the children. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. So look at how how soon the devil wants. Immediately, immediately. Revelation twelve and four. Yeah. Hallelujah. Revelation twelve four. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Right. All the mother angels of third of the hosts of heaven came after the following the influence of Lucifer himself, right? And did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. He says, she's in deliver. She's about to go into deliverance of the child. I'm going to go right there, right? Right as soon for what? For to devour her child as, as soon, soon as it was born. Yes. As soon as it was born. Yeah. Yeah. And you look, family, we know this was a prophecy of the Lord Jesus, right? Yes. Yeah. And when did God move upon the parents to bring the child into the covenant? Eight days. Eight days. days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, was, that was just the shadow. <laughs> right, and that was just the shadow. Glory now God. the real thing. We bring him in immediately. 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 Yeah. Why? Because we see how immediate Satan is working. Yes. He's right. standing. Yeah. Standing right there. Jesus. And he's not playing. We see the fruit of this teaching of this doctrine, which is the word of God through the Holy Ghost. We see the fruit is true because the fruit is in the children here in Israel, right? Blessed, not cursed, filled with the Holy Ghost, even have the fruits of the Spirit, obviously, through God in them, right? But then we see opposite to the children of Satan and how they're greatly at work again with the right. children. Mm -hmm. I mean, great. They're the children, the satanic church is popping up in all kinds of schools. After school programs, after school this, LGBTQI dot cross TV, 
you all ask though. Right. Pretty soon pedophilia is going to be legalized because they're making laws for it that it's a chemical imbalance. And if the right. gay has a chemical imbalance, the pedophile has a chemical imbalance, right. they're both legal. Right. They're both right. ju just, but that's both the perversion. That's right. both the iniquity. Yes. That is a great, great, great breach. Hallelujah. Yes. God says you better have, it would be better for you to have a millstone hung around your neck and drop into the deep knowing that the Jews fear drowning of death. And so he used that great topic, that great way of speaking. That is a great fear to you. That's better for you to do that than to go and do some great wickedness like this. Right? But this, oh, Lord Jesus, God is serious about the children. Why? Because he loves them, first of all. They're made in his image. He, he, he made them and shaped them in his own image. And that's why Satan hates the children. He hates us. Right. We're made in God's image, and he hates God. Right. He wants to devour and kill and destroy in everything he can that's made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's such a great outcry, right? A great crying out. Cry aloud and spare not. Bring your children to the waters. Acts 2.39 declares it. The promise is unto you. What's the promise? The filling of the Holy Ghost. The, the remission of sin. Everything of the gospel is fulfilled also here for your child as well. Because God is for them and not against them. Hallelujah. But yet still, many are saying, you know, you're doing too much. The children need to be at a certain age. You need to do this and do that. But yet, they're walking into carnal mind, which is death, right? But when we get and stay into the spirit, the spirit of God through his word will keep us in that straight and narrow. It'll show us, no, don't take no either that. You better baptize that child, right? If I did it, if I had them do it at eight days old, that child didn't know what they were getting cut for. That child didn't know what was truly going on. Yeah, they truly didn't have maybe that great of an understanding at that time. But yet in the spirit, they still know something's going on. In the spirit, they can still see demons. They still cry out against them and wake up in the middle of the night. Hallelujah. Well, if you train up that child and you show them, you need to call upon the name of Jesus, son. You need to call. I say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That spirit of God will rise up in them and give them even more discernment, right? Well, they don't even know why they're being baptized. They don't need to know. It's my position because I know what's going on. On. I see the devil trying to take him. I'm not going to allow some falsehood to come up in my house that I have to be accountable unto God thinking I'm living right. And God said, depart from me. You had your whole house out of order. Your child weren't even saved. They were full of even demons and you didn't even know. Hallelujah. And you think that I'm going to go and live for God and, and, and do all this and him to say that? I want to please him. Yes. I don't want him to have no art against me. God forbid. He yes. said, depart from me. Well, Lord, I don't cast out devils. I don't heal the prop side. Of, you know, I don't even know you. Right. You're naming up in this book. Jesus. God forbid. Right. God forbid that happen. Jesus. God forbid. You tell me all the wrestling of the devils and all these things. And God said, depart from me. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Yeah. But this is the glory and the power of God that. God wants the child win as soon as the baby's coming out the womb. That's how fast Jesus wants the child. Because that's how fast Satan wants the child. And he's speedily at work to get that child into confusion. Oh, you're a giraffe today. Oh, you're a boy and a girl and a girl and a boy. You don't know what you are. You're a triple, quadruple-minded person now. Why is that? Because there's four to five, six different devils living in that vessel. That's why Satan's at work in operation in these things with the children. Right. The church is standing up and crying out against. They can say we're false prophets. They can say we're liars. We're preaching falsehood all they want. We'll go back to the scripture and say, thus saith the Lord. And we're going to say who's true and who's a liar. We're going to hold steadfast and prove all things. Right? Prove all things that are good. And hold steadfast to it. Amen? Amen. It's exactly how fast the enemy is at work against the children. And the witches and the warlocks, the sorcery, they come against children too. But when we... As Israel, as the children of God, we, st we stay working to keep all iniquity and all perverseness away from us and our household as much as, as God instructs us to, to the fullness thereof. It ain't going to come up on the children in the way that the enemy wants it, right? The children will be saved. The children will be set free. The, or they, they will remain set free, right? Because it's possible to get set free and go back in bondage. Right. It's very possible. The scripture says that you get delivered of a demon, you'll come back with seven times stronger coming in to, to see about that vessel but you gotta you gotta see this 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 vessel's clean now this vessel is garnished and thoroughly swept and all sanctified set apart filled with the holy ghost right Amen. thank you jesus Amen. and so this is this is this that's a perverseness in of itself right there that's a perversion of the scripture of that doctrine that they got to be at the age of accountability to even be baptized that's a perverseness that, that's a breaching of itself Right. right there, because you have a, a church, a congregation believing that that's a breach. And not only that, you see the pastor preaching it. That's a breach. 
God's saying, I've never said that. Right. God never said, where in the scripture, they'll say, well, show me in the scripture an infant being baptized. God will say again, as Apostle Kip said, but the Holy Ghost saying through him, show me anywhere in the scripture a teenager being baptized. That same doctrine showing it, but yet when we go into the scripture in the book of Acts, the whole household was baptized. Right. The whole household, well, it doesn't say that there was a baby, but the whole household was baptized. But then Jesus says in scripture, I believe it's in Luke, but it says, suffer the infants to come unto me. God uses that particular same word that you're looking for in the scripture. He uses it. And he yeah. says, suffer it to be so now. The same way he told John, suffer it to be so that you baptize me. John, John said, you're all, you need to baptize me. But he said the same word, suffer it. That means allow it. Right. It may not make sense to you right now. Right. You're in the flesh. Get out that flesh. That's right. Get out that little peace sized right. mind. It ain't gonna make sense to you, John. Right. Just do what y'all just do what I'm telling you to do, man. Just do what I'm telling you to yeah. do, and all will be well. All, all righteousness will be fulfilled. Right. It's exactly why we just need to not right. think on our own minds. That's carnal. Right. That's the ways of death. Jesus. Lord, just help me to, yeah. to just do it first of all. If I don't even know it, right? My, my mind not even might agree with it, right? It's going to think of all right. times, but that's perverseness. That's right. But when that perverseness exalts the word of God, that's a breach. And see, this right. is what I'm getting to, that the church, these, these people, right. these witches and warlocks, they're like, oh, I don't found the real deal. I'm living for the devil because I got all kinds of play on these Christians, right? They operate against Christians specifically, but it's because there's perverseness and iniquity. Right. That's, right. Right. that's why. That's right. I've, the Lord's allowed me to see even people coming into the churches. Right. I'll testify to this again that that Satan worshipers go to the churches. Sure. They're trying to get on the praise and worship team because they got their occultic powers and they want to put spells on the people and all these things, right? And the people don't even see that this man ain't even living for God. Right. This man's filled with demons for real. Um, this man is full of perverseness and iniquity. He's working witchcraft on the people, but they're just so much in the love, just so much in the blessing. God bless you that they don't even see as a child of the devil trying to come in and infiltrate the camp. Right. And so they're allowing it. Oh, yeah, brother, God loves you. Come on up. Yeah, I've got the bass guitar. You've been here for six months. Pick it up. No. Right. That man, because it's a testimony of mine that it happened. This, this same situation. I'm like, something ain't right, bro. I'm praying for him. Something ain't right, Lord. I'm praying for him. We get together at, at a sort of like a little men's housing thing, right? Something ain't right, Lord. And the spirit of the Lord rose up in me. I said, what's going on? Right? Th this man starts playing music to a song he never heard. Some worship music I listened to, and he's playing it to the beat. And he's looking at me right in my eyes, and it was a devil. I said, I see you. I said, I know this thing's real. I know I know y'all got some powers. I know y'all got some powers, but see, God's so good, he's going to shut down every breach, all the iniquity that your powers dry up. That's right. And that we continue to tread over all y'all. All y'all all y'all evil spirits I'm speaking to. Right? It's a spirit, right? right? Treading over everything. But yet, hmm. the Lord rose upon me and said, man, what, 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 what's going on with you? He's like, what's going on? I'm like, no, what's really, it got real. What's, what's really going on with you? In the spirit, what are you doing? You know, why did you go camping up here at the uh, what's that? Uh, the little, the little, the spiritual hot spot up here, Sedona, oh. Sedona, right? I, I took a, a family little trip out, and then he took a family trip out. Uh, coincidentally, not really the same time to Sedona, which is a spiritual portal, a hot spot where all these people love to go to because there's something over there that just happens in the spiritual realm. And that's why when you drive through that little town, there's crystals and crystals and enchantments and, and sorcerers and all. It's full of witchcraft there. Mm -hmm. I said, but bro, why did you choose to go there? Mm -hmm. Knowing that I don't heard that his dad was an occultist, his mom was an occultist, but now they're giving their lives to the Lord. But the fruit ain't matching up. Mm -hmm. The fruit is not bearing witness to this tree that you're saying that you are. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord rose up in me and said, no, we're going to pray for you today, brother. We're going to pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's when... God's glory got revealed, amen, that was even his mercy was still upon this man's soul. I said, brother, you need to repent from your foolishness. You think that you're going to come in the camp of the Lord, that men are trying to get right with the Lord for real and work out their salvation with fear and trembling, right? Fresh back into Tucson on this walk with the Lord, right? And, 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 and God's mercy was still upon him. We prayed over him. That devil came out. That devil came up and manifested in the physical realm and dragged a claw on my face. Well, goosebumps rose up over my body, right? Trying to put fear up over me, but the Lord prevailed and that thing got casted out, Amen. right? Even when it manifests in the physical and there's a claw dragging across your face, you cannot be fearful. Yes, they just try to get you to be fearful because that way in itself will make you doubt. And God said, don't right. doubt in me, right? right? God, this thing is real. You cannot doubt in the word and the will of God. Right. That right there is another little foothold. You start doubting, you don't have faith. Now you're falling apart. 
You've got to have faith in knowing that Jesus is real and all subject of are, are, are all spirits are subject to him. No matter if they manifest in the physical and try to drive a claw across your face, right? That man got delivered. He starts breathing and uh, he's like, how'd you know? How'd you know? Because he was faking it, right? He was saying he was Christian. He was going to church with us. He was doing Bible study with us. He was living, us, living with us in the house and such things. The Lord knew. The Lord knew. The man starts testifying, oh, you, you, what you said is really true. I guess he thought I was lying about some of the testimonies I was sharing with him about witches and these things. And he said, oh, you really have been through this stuff, huh? I said, yeah, absolutely. But see, God is good. I said, bro, you need to repent. You just simply need to repent and give your life to the Lord. But yet, amen, the repentance must be true, right? Not a false repentance. Bring forth fruit, work, uh, fruits, you know, works met for repentance. Bring forth the works, right? And then you'll see the fruit. And so again, we see that the perverseness and iniquity, these children of the devil are trying to infiltrate the, the church. They're snakes. They try to send their in, right? And they literally get a kick out of what they do because they might have some power of control because what? There's perverseness and iniquity in the church, right. in the doctrine, in the teaching, right. Right. right? To infant baptism, child baptism. No matter what age, it's baptism. We try to pervert that and we, we exclude the children. God is going to deal with you. Amen. God is going to deal with you. But we continue on. Amen. And, 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 and a couple more here. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll just look right here into Revelation chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Revelation 2, 14 through 15. Right? We'll talk about removing the stumbling block. Right? Removing these things, exposing. But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them. Right? That hold the doctrine of Balaam. So we look back to how we opened up. In numbers with Balaam. Right? And he's saying to the church right here, because thou hast there them that hold this teaching, this instruction with scripture, but yet it's a teacher not truly of God. It's of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. How? To eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. This is the doctrine that's in the house of God that God's going to deal with one day, but most people repent from it. That it's okay to remain in fornication if, and, and sleep with someone if you're not married. You can go ahead and do these wicked things and, 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 and lay perversion before your eyes and all these things. And God says it's not. But there's workers in doctrine of Balaam out there that says, yeah, it's okay. That is not okay, right? Eat things, sacrifice unto idols. Well, what is that? You're sitting at a table of idols. God preaches against pagan holidays. You do the research, it's full of demons and different spiritual, uh, di different fallen angels, we'll call it, that they're worshiping since back in Egypt, back in time. Amen. And now it's so subtle. Now it's so cute. Now it's so in the store. Now it's such a thing to do. Now it's in the church. Now it's over here. Now it's over there. There ain't no Easter bunnies with Jesus. It's the Amen. Lord's Supper drinking out of one cup and the bread that's unleavened. That's his body with no sin. Amen. That we all must take but we don't even have life. The word of God says there ain't no raising up Christmas trees unto Nimrod or to man, to my, to my, to Moose or any of these false gods. You start looking into it. They wrap it up with so many other things. And then you, you see the Satanists say that that Christians took Christmas from us because right. it goes to one of their little things that they worship. And you start seeing that God says, you, you sit down and you eat things, sacrifice unto idols. You worship these things. You, 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 you post or repost or even engage in, in these things that are, that are pagan, that are of Satan's kingdom, being real with it. You're eating things. You're, you're, you're talking about it. You're conversing about it. You even might be justifying it that it's okay to do unto the Lord because it's when Jesus was born, but God wasn't even born. Or the, the Son of God wasn't born on December 25th. Right. Scripture don't even declare that. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. But we see these things that this is the doctrine of Balaam. Oh, it's okay. Right. Raise up that tree, say it's unto the Lord. Right. Go and bow to it. Push your gift underneath it. Let that spirit have that for a while. Then you have to go back and bow to it and get it again from that same spirit tied to that tree, right. which ain't of Christ purely at all. Hallelujah. And just even thinking about that little star, right? Even Brother Justin was getting this, and the Lord showed, showed, showed us, right, that the star on top, it's of light, right? With David's star and all that, you know, all, all that, right? But that has nothing to do because Satan masquerades as an angel of light. 
that angel of light, man, he be right up on top of that tree. He's thinking, y'all doing this unto Jesus, but you're doing it unto my kingdom. Right. You're doing it unto the feet of, of, of the enemy, thinking it's unto the Lord. And God's saying, that's the doctrine of Balaam. And many people are saying, you can still do these things. Right? right? You, you can still partake in pagan activities, which is false God worship. When God says, thou shalt have no God before me other than me, right? It's the first great commandment and still to this day. And so this is the doctrine of Balaam. You can do all that wickedness. You could go into witchcraft, sorcery, even in the church, which obviously we see that happening. You can fornicate. You can do whatever you want. That's the doctrine of Balaam. So, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Amen. Nicolaitans, you look into that word, it's to conquer the people. Literally getting down to the, to the meaning of conquering the people. But we see what type of spirit that is, even with those word choices, right? And what that what that means, mm -hmm. amen? And so trying to, these spirits that are in operation through these doctrines in the house of God, trying to conquer people to do these things. But again, you want to go ahead and eat things, sacrifice to idols? You want to do what Jeremiah chapter 10 preaches against? You want to look into zodiac signs and your birthdays and celebrate when we look? That's another thing right there that the, the who, who, who was the first one? Pharaoh. The first one in the scripture, Pharaoh had the birthday. As the scripture says, do we want to be walking after the image or the, the likeness of Pharaoh? No, we want to be walking after the image and likeness of Christ. Amen. And that's the commandment, yes. right? So how are we going to adapt traditions of Egypt, which is the world of Pharaoh, and lift up ourselves of God? So I'm going to light up candles and do self-worship and offer, offer up cakes and these things, amen? As we get into that's a whole other teaching. But God says, don't be, d d let's go there, Jeremiah chapter 10, amen, that I'm not just paraphrasing mm -hmm. and missing up any words here, amen? Glory to God. Jeremiah chapter 10. He tells us these things. Thank you, Jesus. This is the doctrine of Balaam, saying that you, you can go and do this. Well, let's look into a part of that. Jeremiah chapter 10. Amen. This is compromising, right? Compromising and going into idolatry, but yet you think you're doing unto the Lord. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Again, he's dealing with his people, he's dealing with his church, right? And this is a breach, but we're going to close it up. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. We're not going to learn the way of Pharaoh. We're not going to learn the way of the world. We're supposed to be renewed in our minds, right, by the word of God. Amen? Not being conformed to this world, but being renewed, right? And being dismayed at the signs of heaven. No sign gazing, no sign of the stars. I'm a Libra, I'm a Zodiac. None of that. None of that transfers into the house of God. That's all Egypt. That's all Pharaoh. That's all magicians. That's all that witchcraft. That's perversion. That's iniquity. That's following after other false gods that God will say, that's a breach. You better repent and close it. Amen. Verse three, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth one, I'm sorry, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an ax. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not, right? That sounds exactly like a Christmas tree up in the corner of the house. Amen. Amen. They'll go cut that thing down. Go go Home Depot, go get it, go raise up in my little tree stool, you know, hold it with the four pins, all of that, right? We thought we were doing it to the Lord. Every year we thought, oh, it's a glorious time. Family gets to come and see how Satan makes it look so in the carnal, so much in the carnal. Well, how are you going to walk away from that, Joshua? Your family still celebrates it. How are you not? How, what are you guys going to do on that day? You get time off from work and all these things. The world caters to Satan's kingdom. Why? Because he is the God, Lord, issue of this world. We also see even with the birthdays again, right? What's the number one thing that's influenced on all platforms of social media and on the phones? Today's your birthday. Yeah. Friendly reminder. Yeah. Facebook reminder, your homie's birthday is today. Right. Send him a gift. Send him a, you know, God bless you. Happy birthday. No. See how the world, we got to start seeing this thing like, what is going on? Right. Why is the world so much doing it? Right. Right. What's really up with that? Because we're not supposed to be of the world. We're not supposed to be of Egypt. Yeah, right. God says, right? And, and the, the birthdays gets tied to the zodiac signs, which, which is the sign of the stars, which he says, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Right. Don't worry about all that. Right. Why when he's why, why would we celebrate our first carnal birth of a sinful man that we need to be born again? That's right. Amen. Born again. We celebrate the birth of Christ. Right? We want to lift up a day holy unto the Lord. We don't use the, the scripture out of context to say, well, one esteem of the day higher than another is holy unto the Lord. Well, you can't judge that man and such things. Well, if the root of the thing be unholy, then the whole lump 
is holy. Right, right, right. right? So you test that spirit. Well, let me see. If this came from Egypt, if this came from stargazing, if this came from feeding of the flesh and lifting up Pharaoh as a god on his birthday, and now people do it as little gods on earth and in the world, hold on, that, that root ain't is wicked. Right. Jesus didn't even celebrate his birthday. Yeah. Jesus didn't even show us his birthday. That's right. Jesus lifted up his day of being crucified, death, burial, and resurrection. Right. That time of the Lord's Supper, right. he revealed thoroughly. Right. Yes. Yes. Remember it. Do this in remembrance of me, he says. He says, you want to do something in remembrance? Do it of my death. Why he's showing and showing us that you need to celebrate, that you're going to make it to heaven, that you're going to be glorified. Why are you still trying to light up candles and celebrate this physical death of, of this destructive body that's 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 of, of wickedness anyways? It's born and shaking iniquity. you got to deny yourself daily. It still tries to lust after the spirit of God and do the right. things of the world. Like, why are we celebrating the carnal man when that thing's supposed Jesus. to be in the grave? Yes. God right. says, don't celebrate that thing no more like Jesus. Pharaoh did and all these Jesus. other men do. Amen. And why does the world celebrate it so highly? These are breaches for real. Well, now y'all taking it too far. Y'all doing too much. <laughs> no, we ain't. Because now we done been opened up to God and opened up our understanding. Like, oh, this thing's for real. His word declares it line up online. Amen. And if we dare to go back to do it, Right. We'll be violating our conscience with God convicting us, first of all. Yes. And not only that, that would be God's mercy saying, hey, and then his grace would say, okay, you want to keep doing that? See what happens, right? But see, Satan will say, it's okay to do it. God don't really care about all that. The doctrine of Balaam will say, yeah, go ahead and lift up and eat big sacrifice to idols, right? Lift up the Christmas tree, burn your candles, have, have incense. When really you look into the root of these things. People would gather for someone's birthday because it was witchcraft. They would come to protect from evil spirits coming to, 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 to block the person's, uh, or to harm the person's birth and all these things, right? And so you look into the things, it's wicked, it's not of God, we rebuke it. Back into the scripture in Jeremiah, chapter 4 talks about they hammered it with nails, it doesn't move, they decorated it with silver and gold, we're talking about Christmas tree, they are upright as a palm tree, or as the palm tree, but speak not, they needs must be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee? Amen. Verse 7 says, Who would not fear thee? Amen. O king of nations, for to thee doth it appertain, appertain, Help me, Lord. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations and all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. Right? There's none like unto thee. Why am I going to raise up and, and follow a false god and idol idolatry? There's none like you, Lord. Verse 8. But they are all together brutish and foolish. We don't want to be them, they, that are brutish and foolish and despise and reject counsel and knowledge of the Lord. God says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. This is where the, the Israel is, the church in the house of God, that I don't want to know. I, that's, that's too much legal advantage. I just want to do all that. No. God says, you ought to learn these things, study to show yourself approved, and be in the scriptures that you can prove all things and hold fast to that, which is good. Amen. Don't be brutish and foolish about these things. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Amen. It's, it's a doctrine of vanities. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That we want to obey uh, the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to jump over one more chapter of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 11. Amen. Yeah, here we go. Starting at verse 2. Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah, and to the, habit the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. So how do cursings and things come upon by people when you don't obey the word of God? When you give heed to seducing spirits. Verse 4, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. So there's a commandment, right? And there's a charge that's to be laid. When you come, when you want to be baptized, you've got to turn from your sin for real. You've got to give your life to God for real and, and continue with him, right? And, and God says, I command you, once I bring you up out of the world, out of Egypt, which is the foreshadow right of the world, it's a commandment from the from the from the Orion furnace saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. 
so shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. We have to obey the word of God. Obey, obey the spirit of the Lord. Amen. This is a commandment of the Lord that we don't go back into the world and bring it into the church. We don't bring, ultimately, bring, go and get breaches and bring them into the church. That's great foolishness. It's, it's straight, simple rebellion, right? And, and so I, I just jumped down to Isaiah 57, starting at verse 13. Glory to God. Isaiah 57, verse 13. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. But the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land. Right? Vanity. All is vanity. The things of the world is vanity. It's carnal things. It's going to perish. Why are we so fixated on vanity and vain things? Why am I so worried about what other people are thinking about vain things? I don't, but we can still spend time together and do things unto the Lord as the scripture allows and not violate and transgress against a holy God in his first commandment of put another God before him or idol, right? We can still do these things and, 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 and be in the Lord, right? That's what we ought to do as, as Israel, right? But it's vanity. But we want to be the people that possess the land and inherit his holy mountain, as he says in the scripture, right? And how are we even going to do that is, again, obeying his word. Verse 14, and shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. This is what the Lord does through his, his, his pastors that will feed you after truth and his knowledge and understanding. They'll see God will show them the stumbling block. Give them the understanding and guidance by the word of God, so where none of us are misled, and will instruct them to remove that stumbling block. What was the stumbling block even now? We just spoke on even of the Christmas tree, of the of the of these things, of the birthdays, right? All that can comes together. These are things that are breaches and stumbling blocks for the people that others will justify. Doctrine of Balaam will say it's okay. Verse 15: For thus said the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Hallelujah. Humble spirit. When God comes and corrects you and says, put that away, are you going to humbly submit to him? Or are you going to harden your heart? He says, if you hear my word today, harden not your heart. That continues in teaching and in doctrine. But some will harden their heart and run back to Balaam's doctrine. Mm-hmm. Say, oh, that's, that's too much. I got to do all that. I know it says that, but come on. Now. You think it's New Testament, bro. Come on. He shed his blood for all that. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He shed his blood. Do you, you know that's that much more serious now? Right. You do know that the new covenant is actually more serious now. And you see how serious he was in the old. Mm-hmm. With the law. With the stoning and the death and the such things, right? And he, So it's more serious now that, that people are trampled. The, the, the blood of the Son of God, the Messiah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. way more serious. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Right? To have a humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit shall fail before me, and the souls which I have made. For iniquity of his covetousness, covet, covetousness was I wroth. Amen? Covetousness, we have to get completely out of our, our, our mind and vision from what the world taught us how to be, right? You got to go and be a go-getter. You got to go and spend all your time working overtime and going and doing this and doing that and coveting after the material things. You set your forth and your eyes and your heart on Jesus. He will provide. He says, Matthew 6, 3, 3, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Doctrine will prove God's righteousness. Amen. Doctrine will keep you in God's righteousness. That you not go into your own way, go into own perverseness and own iniquity and even other doctrines of Balaam, right? But God will provide all those things to you. I don't need to worry about all that. I ain't going to cover that thing, bro. For real, I don't, I'm not going to take it with me. As Job Amen. said, naked I came in and naked I'll go, right? We're going to turn back into the dust. As the flesh is wild, right? And smote them. I hid, I hid me and was wroth, and he went on forwardly in the, in the way of his heart. We don't need to go on in the way of our own heart. Amen. Because right here, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they, oh Lord Jesus, ye are they which justify yourselves before men. 
This is what Israel, the church of God, is doing. The churches that God's rebuking in Revelations, they will justify themselves where? Before men. It's okay to do these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Pastor Bumgarner, he's on one. He's doing way too much, y'all. But we can go ahead and raise up 18 Christmas trees on the platform in the pulpit. Don't you know that that's an abomination? Don't you know that that's a great breach? And I'm telling you, that's the church where that Satan worker was going to try and get on that same platform. And the time we went, I seen one time, I seen they got all these Christmas trees. I said, Lord Jesus, help them. Help them, Lord God. Bring truth to them. Bring correction. That they would even be humble to repent. Mm -hmm. That they would have this understanding, right? Because here they was justify yourselves, yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. And that's where the justification of the man will say, God knows my heart. Mm. The woman will end up, you know, you come in as you are, but you ain't going to stay as you are as we know. Mm. God says, you're going to be sanctified, set apart, a Holy Ghost filled, a holy people peculiar, right? Yeah. And so, but yet people will still continue to go to churches, high skirt, right? High heel, all these things going on, looking like you're going straight into the club. Mm -hmm. Looking like a straight woman that a man of the world is going after when that man should be looking for a woman of Sarah. A woman that, that's Holy Ghost filled, living fear, uh, fear in the Lord, having a reverence of God, right? right. But, but, they, but, but God does know our hearts. Man will say, I'm going to justify this abomination, and he knows my heart. God says, yeah, it's desperately wicked, mm -hmm. right? For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Amen? And this is how we know right here as well. Proverbs 21, 2 through 3, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Every single way we will, we, our heart will try to even justify if we, if we don't have no control over it, right? Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God don't give us the discernment and, and the, the strength to override and see these things. But the Lord pondereth the hearts, amen? To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice, amen? Mm -hmm. and, and this is where the state of the church is with, with really, forget the witchcraft and Satan's kingdom and all that. It comes down to the heart of man. As always, it comes down to your heart. And, and when your heart's right with God, amen, anyone online too, hallelujah. And, and you may be going through some witchcraft. You may be going through some spiritual warfare. You just gave your life to the Lord. You're still continuing to press in, right? You got your heart for real, truly set on the Lord. And then you continue to abide in the truth of his word, true sound doctrine, amen. Nothing will come up against you and harm you. You will be blessed and you will increase and you will multiply amen. as the word of God says, amen. amen. And that's just what the word of God says. And it's, it's, it's facts. It's, it's real. Amen. And we can testify to that. Amen. And so, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> I believe I'm in 1 Samuel. I got a few more scriptures. Amen. Um, and then we'll. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel, I believe, chapter 15. Starting at verse 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than fat of rams. Right? Verse 23 is the topic of, of, of even this teaching today. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Amen. So what is witchcraft? It's rebellion. It's as simple as that. It's very simple. And when the modesty in apparel teaching the Lord was showing, right, we looked up, witches brought into back in what, what was the certain times of the years, 1950s or a little bit before that, where women used to always have modest apparel on a dress and men right. would be able to tell man from woman just off their apparel far away and their hair, right? Yeah. Men had short hair, women had long hair. The Bible says it, right? And so, but then witches, literally, what we were looking into, brought in this witchcraft and brought rebellion to where the women would go into the workplaces, roll up their sleeves, act like men, cut their hair, smoke cigarettes and curse and have profanity, right? Get full of the world and also put on pants and start working and being like a man. It was strict rebellion from God's word. Amen? But, but we look at this. Amen? Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. So we take our eyes off of those who are working darkness, us being here in Zion, that we want to we be right before God. 
Lord, I pray that there be no rebellion in me. Amen. I pray that there be no rebellion in my household. Amen. I'd be looking at the children of the enemy so much that they're like, yeah, you, you, you're already in rebellion. You don't even know it, right? You don't even know your own book like we know it. We, you know, we, we got we to gotta take our eyes off of others and say, Lord, show me if I have rebellion. Show me if there's these breaches. Show me and lead me into the ways of truth and righteousness, right? Let all these things be closed up, that we even be saved ourselves ultimately, right? Amen. And iniquity... And stubbornness is like iniquity, right? Stubbornness. Stubbornness will be, well, you can hear the doctrine, you can hear the teaching time and time again, but you never submit. That's you're right. being stubborn. You're, 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 you're listening, you're hearing the word, but you're not truly hearkening unto the Lord. You're being stubborn, right? That's idolatry. Again, that's putting yourself before the Lord. But Lord, I don't really want to get this down. Well, Lord, I don't really want to repent and turn from this. I'm gonna, it's going to change up all my stuff or whatever the case is. That's putting ourselves on our own knees before the Lord. And God says, you got to repent from that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yep. And then, so just to add to this, right, that anyone that preaches any other falsehood or any other thing, right, they're pleasing men. They're not pleasing God. Acts 5 tells us, right, 529, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men, right? That this doctrine, this teaching, this name of Jesus, quit preaching in it, quit, quit preaching truth, quit doing this thing and disrupting Satan's kingdom. And we can obey the word of God right. rather than men. Right. And God will be for us. Amen. Who can be against us? Right? Again, ain't none of the stuff y'all may try and cook up. Ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna work. Because we're doing what thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. And God will keep you from going into any temptation of the wicked one. But you just truly have to have your heart set on him and have a humble heart of repentance of anything that he deals with us on, right? At that time, especially. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. There's so much more. Hallelujah. So much more. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It, it, it's, you know, this 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 can go so deep with the scriptures, right? This this could be like a part five as Elder Joseph, right? And BP yeah. on Thursday, it'd be a three hour session, part five already. But <laughs> but this, I mean, I, I pray covered and gave understanding today, amen, to us that the iniquity and perverseness of the word of God mm -hmm. is what God is against. He tells us to guard and repair. That none of that other stuff in the world matters. Amen. It ain't gonna work anyways if they try to do it. Amen. Because we're doing what the Lord God says right. and his standard he has up here. No matter when that flood keeps pouring in and gets higher and higher, we're gonna still be all right. Amen. Because Amen. we're on God's word and yes. not our own word. Thank we're not gonna justify things in our own eyes. Right. We're not gonna say, God, you allow this when it's an abomination. Right. right? We're gonna hold steadfast to this thing. Amen. We pray that other eyes be opened up to it. And repent, amen, and, and truly just serve the Lord out of pure heart, amen. amen. And so I, I give God glory for the word, amen, and just the understanding, amen, that we don't need to be fearful of any of these things, amen. Right. Hallelujah. We see God kept us. He kept us last night. <laughs> he kept us all the other trips, right? Trips I didn't even heard about. So many other testimonies I don't even know about. Elder Brian's still here. His family's right here, amen. right? Still alive, still blessed, still breathing, right? Still multiplying. My Lord, God is so faithful to his word. Why? Because when the man of God stands on that word of God and the woman submits to the husband and does the same thing and the house is in order, ain't nothing going to come against that home. Amen? Amen. So I give God glory. Amen. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you.